Monday, January 25th, 2021. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, On the Right Side of History, and our scripture is Genesis chapter 12. The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. I am old enough to have a history with experience. My first vote in a presidential election was in 1968. In a total of 14 elections, I voted for the winner eight times. In Las Vegas, being right 57% of the time means you go home with full pockets. But I'm not sure this applies. It's just reporting the results like the newscasters. Winning is so very temporary, and having the most votes simply equates with popularity. As each of those voting seasons came to an end, the so-called winning side claimed a new era of peace, justice, and the American way, that the other side had been defeated, and now we can begin again to set things right. And every time I heard one of those afterglow statements of victory, I always had an uneasiness about the certitude of the winner. Depending on whether my vote had been for the victor, my feeling was either agreeably uncertain or disdainfully uncertain. I always had a sense of what if, as in what if my vote was on the wrong side of history. Now, before I lose you in thoughts of either gloating over winning or sour grapes for losing, this is about neither. It has to do with choosing the right side of history, which has nothing to do with which side may win or lose. Winston Churchill is often attributed for originating the phrase, history is written by victors. However, it's a phrase much older than World War II. It's also suspect, according to some. One author has it that the more accurate quote would be, history is temporarily twisted by people, who are going to profit from it in the short term. Whether it comes from the political left or right, I think this expediency motive may prove flawless. It's simply a matter of understanding that publicity matters when it comes to staying in power. When it comes to holding the high ground in public opinion, perception is its own reality. Now, All of that is a matter of human relationships, political machinations, and intentions of those who would be the victor, not the vanquished. The tides of popularity and so-called success are short-lived. So, what do we make of all this? Is this just cynicism or hypercriticism? Should we not participate in it at all? Summarily trash everything? Absolutely not. So what then? What's the purpose in all this? Why even bring up the matter if there's no end to it? Well, I'm glad you asked. Like the unknown cards in another's hand, God stands behind the curtain of our ability to see. And as with Abraham, the Lord stands ready to bless or curse, depending on whether we intend to act with or against his will. This is the nature of God in his complete sovereignty. Sovereign God is the ultimate winner in complete righteousness. His will is immutable and irresistible. Therefore, it is God's will which constructs, writes, and validates any history. For you today, if you want to be on the right side of history, it's a matter of surrendering one's heart and life to God's will. Eat you on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.